Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, violating your privacy with a cardboard box. As you may know, as an active member of this Human Meme podcast, we recently moved into a modern high-rise building. I call it the Great White Monolith on the Hilltop. And the Jersey City Fire Department has said, on the record, this is now the safest building in the entire city. Because this Great White Monolith uses all the latest building materials and electronics available on the market today. This building is built, and it will not burn. And all of that is quite lovely. It's a blessing to be so safe and secure where you sleep. What isn't quite so warming, though, is the condescension and the judging of your neighbors by your neighbors. Now, I tend to get along with the building staff the best. They work hard, they sweat, they have heavy hands and firm grips. Unlike most of the people who live in this building, and that includes me. So while most of the residents are charming and friendly, there are the erroneous few who make assumptions and conditional judgments built on bad, unsituational analysis. For example, there is one young woman in our building who has decided, thinks even, that I am part of the building staff. She asks me to hold the elevator. She volunteers me to her neighbors to help them work their windows. And she even asked me to break down her cardboard boxes and put them in the trash room for her. Now, she may very well think that I am her neighbor just up the hall and to the left. But I don't think she'd treat me that way if she really knew I was a rent-paying do-gooder like her. No, she thinks I work on our floor because she's likely seen me helping other neighbors like her and dealing with our large amount of boxes when we moved in. And she assumed, presumed, that I work here and that I did not really live next to her. And I can live with that misunderstanding. And I am living with it because I really don't mind doing things that she asked me to do for her because I'm happy to help. But what I do not like is how dismissive of me she is, and that she will not look me in the eye when she speaks to me. I am there, but not here, and my purpose, it appears, is to serve her and help her as she deems necessary. And yes, I know the key to ending her misunderstanding of me is just to flat up introduce myself and tell her who I am. But we're sort of way past that point right now. Because every time I've tried to say howdy neighbor and offer a warm handshake in friendship, she has used that moment as an opportunity to assign me a new duty. And so it's all now become a great game of observation, a one-way mirror observation as I try to figure her out because she already appears to think she knows who I am. And so you wonder who she is. And why she behaves this way, and that, and what, if anything, should, could, or woulda, coulda been done about all of this and getting it resolved earlier. And now, officially, to my young neighbor, I share this warning. Beware who you are and who you claim to celebrate, and
and share in public online. And yes, we've heard it all before. Be wary of stranger danger and Facebook stalkers. But here's what I was able to divine easily, innocently, and simply about my new task, master neighbor. Using only the public information available to anyone in the building, staff, resident, rodent, or visitor. Now, for the record, about this young woman who clings down on me and all of her identifying information has, in this podcast, been obfuscated and twisted to remove any real danger to her. But there's enough of her there to scare you as the chilly picture of her gets redrawn for your attention. And all of my discovery was done in an hour. And it started by simply checking her name on the boxes she had me demolish for her. And I found all this information about her in under an hour. Starting by checking for her name on the boxes she made me demolish for her. And those empty cardboard boxes are available to anyone in the building to take a look at. And in fewer than 59 minutes, I had her everything. I knew her work history. I knew her family, names, relationships, locations. I knew her pets. I knew her current salary. I knew her on her open Facebook page. I came to know her even better on her open Instagram page. And on LinkedIn, everything a young professional could wonder was sitting there, answered. None of her online information was protected in any way. Her entire social life is open for the admiring. And while she appears to certainly be fine with that, should she be? Her Instagram page was the most damning for providing insider information that I would consider sacred. We see her on vacation. We see her in skimpy bikinis with lots of flesh showing. We see the layout of her new apartment. We see the possessions she has in her apartment. We can guess the floor she lives on, even though we already know what floor she lives on, based merely on the heightened view out of her bedroom and living room windows. And yes, her bedroom... We can see how her bed is positioned, just so, and what she has on her windowsill, and how sloppily she chooses to not make her bed with pink, furry pillows against a white leather headboard. So if I were really a bad actor with cruel intentions, and yes, for the record, I may actually be a really bad Bad actor, actor, as you've come to know in this human meme podcast, but not in a bad criminal actor sense way. But as I'm trying to suggest, if I were a threat, this young woman might very well be in trouble. We know where she works. We know how she thinks. We understand her strategy in life. We know who walks her dog. All via public photos and shared information online. No insider information, secrets, password, friendships are being used here at all. And she has so rightly exposed herself via social media in bad and dangerous ways that we worry about her. And her fancy job in the big city and how all of this is irreconcilable with the reality that is supposed to be a modicum of a private life. And so, my friend, we move through our life, and we think we know who we are, and we think we control the message of what we become. But we never do. And we have no idea what role other people are really playing in the strategy of our lives. So please be wary that you are not self-deceiving and self-doxing Let the rivers flow and let the marbles roll. 
But then you may be surprised that the person you're asking to de-cardboard and de-boxify your life isn't quite who you expected. And maybe that person has ordinary curiosity to try to determine the how and why of your odd behavior with full attention being paid. And without a non-obliteration agreement in place, you may quickly find out what you are sorry to know and have sown, and that there are no secrets worth sharing, while every private moment is worth keeping to yourself. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.